Welcome to our review on humans and pollution. First thing we're going to consider then is what's happened to the human population over time. What we do know, I hope, is that the number of humans is increasing. If we go back a thousand years, then we actually see the population was actually stable. There are a couple of reasons for this. The first one is we didn't have many people around. That meant there was a limited amount of reproduction. And secondly, there was a limited food supply. So those two things kept the population in check and kept it stable. If we now jump forward to between 1600 and 1900, then we see a steady increase in our population. Now, this is down to the fact we developed better farming methods, which meant more food was available, and we were improving hygiene standards. So what we see there is less people will be dying as a result of the poor hygiene. And finally, if we go to the period after 1900, then we see a dramatic rise in the population. Now, this is due to a variety of factors. So the fact we've improved diet, so that means people living longer there. We've improved hygiene, so people are getting less diseases. We've improved healthcare, so even if you do get a disease, it's not necessarily going to kill you. And there's a much lower infant mortality rate, which altogether means the population is increasing. So when we see this kind of growth, it's actually something called exponential growth. So basically what that tells us is that the more individuals there are in a population, the faster the population growth will be, which is why the rate of population growth is accelerating because we've got more people there, which means there are more able to breed. So if we think about what effect this has of this increasing population, then the first thing is that some countries will experience food shortages. If the population increases at a faster rate than we're able to produce the food, then people could well starve. We're going to find more land is going to be used for farming and building, which can obviously lead to destruction of habitats. We're going to produce more pollution, which can have knock-on effects to the environment. And we're going to be using up the world's resources too quickly. This kind of growth is not sustainable. One thing to bear in mind is that even though developed countries have smaller populations, if we look at how many resources we use per person, then it's much greater than what we see in developing countries. So despite the fact that developed countries have smaller populations, we use more resources per person and therefore we create more pollution per person. So if we consider what effects humans actually have on the environment, two key categories. First one is agriculture. So when we're growing more of our food, what we do is we're going to use certain chemicals. So we'll use fertilizers and pesticides, which can have those knock on effects on the environment. In order to actually be able to grow more food, we'll be carrying out deforestation and cutting down large areas of forests, which are obviously habitats. We also practice this thing called monoculture, which is where in a field we'll just be growing one plant as opposed to a variety of different plants growing there. And finally, we're going to produce large amounts of animal waste where we're also raising large numbers of animals. The second category is the towns and industry side. So wherever we've got towns and industry, we've put up buildings, which means that we've taken away habitats from other organisms. We will also be carrying out quarrying and extraction of raw materials from the ground. We will create a lot of waste products that we will be dumping in a variety of different ways. We could be producing lots of toxic chemicals, which can have detrimental effects on the environment, and also just the sewage that we create in our towns. All of those could have negative effects on the environment. If we consider how humans influence the environment, then one of those categories is air pollution. So we've got four different pollutants we need to consider. The first two, sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen oxides, these come from the combustion of fossil fuels. And as we make them, they go up into our atmosphere and they dissolve in rain to make acid rain. Now, as the acid rain falls, it can damage plant leaves, it can acidify lakes, it can change the minerals available in the water, and it can cause bronchitis in humans as well. The third one is carbon dioxide, which again comes from the combustion of fossil fuels. It can also make acid rain, but a second problem is that it's a greenhouse gas. So as it accumulates in the atmosphere, then what it does is it traps the infrared radiation within the Earth's atmosphere, leading to global warming. The last one on the list are the CFCs. Now these ones come from aerosol cans and refrigerator coolants. And what they do is they damage the ozone layer. 
If we damage our ozone layer, we're going to end up with more of the harmful UV radiation penetrating down to the surface, which means we could see increased cases of skin cancer. The other category we've got is water pollution. So two key pollutants that we need to consider here. First one is untreated sewage. In that untreated sewage, we've got bacteria that can cause disease, things like cholera, for example. And we've also got high levels of nitrates that can kill fish. Second pollutant are the detergents. Now, those detergents, if they get out into our main water systems, they can kill organisms in the water and therefore affect the food chains.